<laughs> we have your attention. And it, it would be a lot nicer if people would move forward if, if you feel comfortable doing that. It's just a little more cozy. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> You don't have a microphone here. We want to make sure everybody else is on. My name is Siti. It's the evening of June 3rd, 2015, and people are gathering at South Brandywine Middle School to hear a presentation of the proposed comprehensive plan for East Valleyfield Township. It was my goal to have the presentation recorded so that people could make the event, or who wish to hear it at a later time, they couldn't attend, will have the opportunity to do so. Thank you for attending tonight's meeting either in person or by viewing it on video. Thank you. <laughs> Still people coming in, I trust. Okay. Um, first off, please, if you haven't done it now, yet, before you leave, Please sign in. Right. So we have a, a record of being here. Not so much we want to know who you are, but we'd like to be able to get information to you if, we, if at all possible. Um, I'm Ray Ott, and I'm the consultant who's hired to work in the township to work on the township comprehensive plan. Can you speak and, louder, please? Yeah, I'm Ray Ott, and I'm the consultant who's hired with the township to work on the comprehensive plan. And we started this plan in the fall of 2013. And I'm going to introduce Dennis Crook, who's the, the uh, chair of the plan. He'll say a few words, and then we'll give you an overview of the comp plan. And at the end, we'll have time for comments and questions. Yeah. <laughs> All right, like you said, we started uh, in. Uh, 2013 on the comp plan. We've been working on it uh, quite a bit. Uh, we got input back from, from the residents from the last uh, February, I believe it was. And this is a presentation of uh, kind of what we've come up with. And uh, we're getting ready to present it to the board uh, after this process. And uh, we wanted to see what uh, the feedback is off of the presentation. Uh, most of it's we've hashed out quite a few different things, and uh, we pretty much kept to what was come back from the surveys, which was try to keep East Valley Field as much as it is right now. So uh, we pretty much held to that. Uh, we do have a little bit different circumstances than we did last uh, February, um, so. We're going to see how this works. Uh, you want to go ahead? Okay. Thank you, Des. Um, can everybody hear me? No. Yeah. yeah. And if you can, uh, I, I would suggest you try and move forward because I, I am talking it's very loud. And I, I don't th know if I can talk much louder. And I don't know if the people sitting in the front could stand me talking much louder. But, but uh, if you can, please move forward. I don't have a microphone. Um, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the, of the comprehensive plan, and let me go through the slides, and then we'll have time to take questions. Uh, we did have a, how many, I'm just curious, how many were here at the workshop we had in February last year? Just to show a hand. I'd say about half. I, I'm guessing, and, and just from looking at, uh, trying to count how many are here, it looks like there's 70 or 80 people here. Uh, we had 150 at the at the workshop, which is pretty impressive. We had that in the cafeteria. Uh, maybe they thought there'd be lunch. And, uh, so here's the, here's, the, here's the comp plan. And sign-in sheet. This is the agenda. I'm going to talk about the task force, the project, and what the program comprehensive plan is, and then end it with the adoption process. This is what a comprehensive plan is. I don't have to read through that. But I just wanted you to, to note that this thing right here, the Municipalities Planning Code, is the state legislation which regulates how municipalities prepare a comprehensive plan. 
that's the legislation that gives municipalities the most powerful tool they have, and that's a zoning ordinance. And, and so the comprehensive plan is, is uh, supposed to be the background for the zoning ordinance. It's not a zoning ordinance, but it's the, it's the background information and the recommendations of how that uh, the zoning ordinance essentially implements the comprehensive plan. <coughs> Um, and here, well, comprehensive, just so there's no confusion, I put another slide. It's not a zoning ordinance and it's not a subdivision ordinance. It's not an ordinance, it's a plan. And when the, when the municipality and East Valley Field Township Supervisors adopt this plan, it becomes their official policy. But it's not a, it, it is not the law. <clears throat> um, I showed this at the first time, I just kind of throw that up there as, as why us planners try to get people to do planning. Is to, is one is to just prevent totally uncontrolled stuff, and then, then you have a nice, beautiful community at the bottom when you do everything properly. Um, here's the East Valfield uh, Draft Comprehensive Plan, and this is the Township uh, website. And if, if you go to the, the website, this is literally the first page that comes up. If you type in eastfowlfieldtownship.org, you'll get this website. And down here at the bottom, it says New Comprehensive uh, uh, new comprehensive plan draft for resident review. And right here, there's a little button that says click here. If you click there, you'll get the entire document. It'll download, <coughs> it's a, it's a PDF, one, one second, it's a PDF file, and it's about 55 pages. Uh, you can read it online, or you can print out what pages you want. And if, uh, if there's people here that need a hard copy, you can contact the township, and we can try and get you a copy. And uh, I'm gonna, I, I'd like to take questions at the end, but this lady's had her hand up, so I want to take I just want to tell you that it's not on the I was on today. It is. It's on today. It's on the It's on Well, I called the township secretary. She couldn't pull up either. Okay. She had the mail. Let, let me. The, okay, the lady, I don't know if everyone heard, she said that she was not able to get it online. I, I just checked when I, I put this, whoops, I literally put this. Uh, uh, photo or, or, or a screen of the website. I got it today, and I clicked that bot, that button right there, and the whole comprehensive plan <coughs> downloaded. So I printed mine off the line today. Okay, so it is working, and maybe and some some of the here is looking at it on their on their smartphone. So so, so you can you can get it. Right. <coughs> um, the the project was funded by the township. And they also got a, a matching grant from the uh, Chester County Vision and Partnership Program, which is administered by the Chester County Planning Commission. They paid about, I think it was about 70% of the cost of the project for this grant. <clears throat> this is the task force. Uh, these are the people that, that stuck it out through 15 odd meetings that we had, um, telling me what I did wrong and, and, and uh, trying to get everything straight. And, so uh, Dennis Cook, John Schwab, who I think was uh, born on the Planning Commission, Garth Monahan, Jim Duborough, uh, Jim Weeks, uh, Joe Perzon, <coughs> uh, Richard Agaton, he's, he's on, the, uh, on the Planning Commission. And then uh, Jeannie uh, Berlin on the Park and Rec Commission, Joe McCormick's the Historic Commission, Arthur DeLeo is the Agricultural Security Commission, Mark Topp is the Fund Board of Supervisors, and Jim uh, Pedro from uh, the uh, Triple Crush. Sorry. So they were the people that were on the task force that worked on this project. And in addition, there were a lot of times people came to the meetings. Uh, a, lot, the super, a lot of the supervisors attended uh, a lot of the meetings also, in addition to just the, the representative. <clears throat> uh, in, in terms of trying to get understand what the community wanted, we had 15 task force meetings. We had a public workshop last February, which, which was uh, at just like this winter. Uh, it was very cold, the winter of 14, and that was a break in the, in the storm, and I think everybody was willing to get out of the house. So it was attended by 150 residents. And then we did a community survey, which was mailed to everyone, and you could take, also take it out online. It was passed out at the workshop, and we had 153 responses to that. This is, a, this is a picture I took from the, at, the, at the meeting, just to, to give you an idea. I know a lot of people were there that night. It was, it was pretty impressive. It was, uh, and, and people all had the opportunity. We passed out maps. We formed about 15 different groups. And 
people sat down around maps and, and, and discussed what the issues are in their neighborhood, and, and at the end they reported back to us. And this is kind of a summary of, of what came out of that workshop. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna read through these because I think we tried to address these uh, as much as we can in what we did in the plan. Favorable characteristics, good neighbors, housing affordability, and, and when there's numbers here, that's, that's not the number of people that said that, that's the numbers of, of groups that responded that way. I said there were about 15 groups. So we, to the extent that things were repeated, you know, I, I tried to show how often. Housing affordability and variety was mentioned as a favorable. The fact that there's no township real estate tax. They, they like police services. It's quiet here. It's a rural setting and open space, scenic views. And uh, they like having uh, wells and septic systems. Like, that seem to be a comment that people like. Unfavorable characteristics, uh, they don't want development. School taxes are too high. Uh, stormwater runoff problems in parts of the township and, and traffic and roads. Uh, traffic on roads. And that was mentioned a lot. In terms of the, <coughs> we also asked uh, questions that had them answer as to what they thought they would like to see change. And so, and so we said, what would you like to see improved? And uh, lower school taxes was mentioned. Comments on the brain. There, there's also the Brainwine Conservancy and the Chester County Planning Commission is preparing this larger regional project in the Brandywine River watershed, or Brandywine Creek watershed. And uh, we're asking questions about that. That plan is now done. And if you go online at Brandywine Creek Greenway, you can find out uh, what it is. Uh, and we try to incorporate some of that in this plan, but they don't really have that specific uh, recommendation, so there aren't a lot there yet. Um, how would you like to see the township address future? Uh, people commented that, there, that some people were forced to hook up to sewer water if it comes in front of their house. Environmental historic preservation uh, is a high priority. Pedestrian bicycle trails, uh, it was mentioned several times, and, and they said they like them if they're done the right way. And township services and facilities, and, and you gotta remember this was the heels of about the fourth snowstorm that year, so <laughs> better snow removal or something. <laughs> In addition, we, did, we, handed, we sent out this survey, it was handed out that night, but also it was online and people could take it. I, I don't expect you to, to read all that, but essentially the survey worked by scoring things from one to four. And, <clears throat> and, and this is what uh, uh, came out of that. What do you like most like about living in a township? Rural character, scenic landscapes, police, seclusion, privacy, uh, open space preservation, neighborhood, community life, parks, recreation, water quality, historic resources, access to nearby urban areas. Uh, what would you, what would most improve the quality of living in the township? Better road maintenance, open space preservation, farmland preservation, historic resource preservation, more retail business slash employment opportunities, which is somewhat of a contradiction with some of these goals. So, and we try to deal with that in the plan. <coughs> what the least like aspect of the township, high cost of public water, code school, school district and taxes, uh, road maintenance, uh, and mainly I think this is more of a traffic issue. You know, there are some maintenance issues, but it's also traffic. Overdevelopment, it's okay. You're, you're actually pretty fortunate out here. Uh, and township administration was mentioned as, as they probably used to improve it. <clears throat> Most significant problems the township will face in the next five years. Taxes driving people away, overdevelopment, cost of public water, that's mentioned again. Um, roads, maintenance and traffic, and Kutzville school district. So there seems to be a theme there. there we're kind of limited in what we can do about the school, but you know, it's a municipality. Okay, this is the way the comprehensive plan is, is broken down. Uh, there's some background data, there's an appendix which has demographic and financial information about the town, and, and there's a little bit of the history of the town, but, but the, the basic part of the plan is called the plan recommendations. And, and the plan recommendations include these uh, five items. There's a plan for land use, plan to meet housing needs, transportation circulation, protection of natural and historic resources and community facilities and services. And so I'm going to go through these quickly. And uh, that's, that's the five things that the plan addresses. <clears throat> the plan for land use. There's a, uh, and the next 
I'm going to show you this map next, but I'm going to back up here. The future land <coughs> use uh, of, the, uh, of the town, this is, this is a pie chart of how uh, it's distributed in various categories. And some might be hard to read. The largest category here is, is conservation area. And, and this area accounts for, that's actually the proportion of land in the township that's under conservation easements. So that land will never change. In perpetuity, it's, it's already eased. It's either eased or the easements are owned by, by the Brandywine Conservancy, the Natural Lands Trust, or they're under agricultural easements. Uh, they're owned by the, ex, the Chester County Agricultural Preservation Board. So those lands will never change. So you have another related to that, in the plan, we have another wedge of land which amounts to 1,400 acres. This one here, I can't even read here, it's about 4,000 acres. This is about 14 acres, and we recommend this for agricultural preservation. And I'll get into each one of these categories, but basically agricultural preservation is 10 acre lots. And then this, this area here are public lands, and, and these are park lands, and we have two areas that, that we've recommended in the plan that be acquired for additional park and open space land in the township to be owned by the township. So if you look at that wedge, this part of the wedge here, it's probably it's, it's, it's significantly more than half the township is uh, zoned or not zoned. I, I catch I, I, elect, I elected you. I'm not calling us a zoning ordinance in the light, but it's 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 not recommended. It's re more than half the township is recommended to be preserved. <clears throat> then there's uh, another category called residential infill, and that's about 3,500 acres, and it's 31 percent of the township, and that. What it is, is really areas that are already developed, and there's little pockets within those developed areas. And so we call it infill because we said if those areas are developed, that the character of the development that occurs there should respect the quality and, and the character of the development that's already in that area. And so and that's why we're calling it residential infill. Then there's a, a category for residential development, and there are areas in the township that, that are not surrounded by existing development and they're not really part of existing communities. And so there's areas there where there could be future, say, planned development. This is more infill and this would be more uh, planned development on the larger scale. And then finally, there's an area of mixed-use uh, mixed growth, which is recommended for non-residential and it's recommended for, for non-residential uses, including uh, commercial, retail, and, and industrial. And that's up at the, the northern, north central end of the township as you enter in the coast. And, we'll talk. And, and actually, all these categories pretty much conform with the way the township's zone maps. Because we heard loud and clear at the, at the public meetings and at the, <coughs> the work sessions we had and at the survey that you people are pretty much satisfied with, with living in the township and we, we don't we, we want to keep it as it is. Um, this is the future land use map, and I don't expect you to be able to read all this on here, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like. And you can, if you, if you load this up online in this PDF file, you can enlarge every little area to see each parcel, and you can see the street names. It, it, it enlarges extremely well on the, on the website. And but all those categories I just mentioned, these are up here: the conservation areas, and the agricultural preservation. <coughs> There's also three areas that we recommended for, that, that are villages, the like Comstreetville, the Towerville Park area where we are now. Uh, here's, the, here's the Township Park, and here's the Grade <coughs> School property, and then uh, the village of, of Ursel. We recognize those as, as little clusters, historic clusters of buildings, and, and also that, that in those areas, there tend to be some other non-residential type uses that are more uh, like Triple Fresh, that, that are more community-oriented services, and, and we're recommending in here, and I'll get into that specifically, that, that the, the township further investigate how those villages could better function, maybe to accommodate uh, more non-residential development or higher density residential, so there's little pockets of walkable areas in the township. Hmm. Um, so I'm gonna go through each one of those districts. Here's, here's the conservation easement area. All these dark green areas <coughs> are currently under easement. They, they, they are not, will not ever be developed. If the people that own these, if they live on these properties that have sold the development rights on the wrong. So <coughs> that amounts to 4,000 acres. 
and there's 91 parcels, and there's 19, in this whole area here, there's only 19 dwelling units, and there's potential for none in the future. The agriculture preservation area, that's these lighter green areas. <laughs> the recommendation for this area is that it be uh, one tenth of a dwelling unit per acre, which is 10 acre lots. So this plan recommends that, that, that the zoning in this area uh, does not accommodate uh, densities higher than this. There's 1,400 acres, there's 101 parcels. There's 35 existing dwelling units here. As you can see, the southern portion of the township is not very densely populated. And there's potential for 57 new. And that's using 10 acres as a minimum lot size. So these areas, you know, some of these areas could be developed if not at densities greater than 10 acres if this is implemented in the zoning. And it pretty much reflects what the zoning is now. <clears throat> the residential infill. There are these areas <clears throat> like this is, this is Strasburg Road, uh, this is uh, Humphrey, Humphreyville, and, and this little circle here is, is, is about where we are. And there are areas that are already developed. And, and there's an occasional uh, larger parcel. In, 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 in the case of like along here, there's larger parcels uh, that could possibly develop, be developed as, as down here. Um, and the recommendation is that if they are developed, that it be done in the same character as the existing development in those areas. And that's why we're calling it the residential infill. It's not envisioned that these would be areas of of newer housing projects or higher density housing. It would merely be housing that mimics what's already in those areas. And here, here's other, uh, other, oh, well. yeah. you guys are gonna think I'm crazy. I, I just, I, I said this backwards. What I was just describing was residential infill, but were these areas. That's residential infill. And what I was just, what I just showed you, and I apologize, I got off track. These are the areas, the residential development are the tan areas, these larger tan areas, that, that are not surrounded, or not within existing developments. And they're areas where the township could see larger scale residential development. We're recommending that the density, however, not be greater than two acres. And, and there's 1,100 acres, 175 parcels, there's existing 111 uh, dwelling units. There's a potential for 195 new in those areas. It's, and it's these tan areas. Then, what I was talking about earlier, earlier is residential infill. And that's all these, uh, say, light shaded green or, or greenish yellow areas. And these are areas <coughs> that are already developed. Um, we recommend that the uh, uh, minimum Lot size would be 1.33 acres. A lot of them are smaller than that, but we use that number because, for the most part, that, that's kind of a, around an acre, an acre and a third is about the break off before you can get, you, where you can have on site septic system. When you get much below an acre, it's very difficult because the health department requires you to have a backup system. And I'll, I'll talk about that. But that's what we're recommending. There's uh, existing dwelling units in these areas. This is where the bulk of everybody lives. 2,300, almost 2,400 dwelling units in their areas. And there's a potential for 500 new dwelling units if all the infill lots are, are developed. I'm, this isn't saying this is going to happen, but I'm just saying that that's, that's where we are. <coughs> and just, I'm going to go back to land use map to make sure you're all right. I'm talking about this area right here along 82, headed into Coastal. Well, that area is, is what we call uh, mixed use growth. And, and by mixed use, meaning it can be any combination, single or combination uses of non-residential development. If, if, if the township has any possibility of trying to have, uh, at, at a larger scale, any kind of retail services or, or, or larger employment opportunity to expand the tax base, this is where it could occur. And this area has public water and sewer, so it's, it's well set up to accommodate that. Um, it doesn't have, I mean, 82 is essentially the only road through here. It doesn't have route, and, and the, the traffic network through here is not the best. And there's not much we can do to improve. But it is, it, it, 
this is basically how this area is zoned right now in two different zoning districts. One is called mixed use, and the other is called office industrial. And so we've just combined them into one area for the purpose of this analysis. If this were fully developed, there could be almost four million square feet of flurry in that area that were, that were totally built out. We, we estimate that based on impervious coverage requirement. <coughs> Uh, and finally, uh, the public lands. There's two areas. Uh, this area here, uh, uh, which is near where the, uh, the township recycling center is, and uh, the, not recycling, the uh, compost center. And, and they call it the Beagle Club property. And I think it's about 30 or 40 acres. And then the Deloria Brothers property on the way to Medina Borough, which, which is along the floodplain there which is an environmentally uh, challenging site, but we're looking ultimately that that could be reused uh, and as, as public land, either open space, just left as open space, or passive recreation. Okay? And, and, and there are the two areas. And, and again, there's 377 acres, 19 parcels. Uh, there's no dwelling <coughs> area, there's potential for no dwelling areas. So that's what we're talking about, park and recreation and open space. <coughs> And then finally, there's uh, the, develop, the village development areas. And, and again, what's around here, around the Towerville area uh, at the intersection of Strasburg Road in 82, uh, Ursulton, and out here in hum Humphreys, <coughs> the uh, mulching center and the furniture store and, and other places are. <coughs> Excuse me? Oh, it's, I'm sorry, and Newlandville. <coughs> Newlandville is a little urban village just before you get into Coastal. Sorry. But uh, there, are, there are some non-residential uses in there, and it's more of a compact community. Um, when we said, well, what, what, what's all this mean in terms of the future growth of the township? So we, we, we ran the numbers, and, and, and I don't suspect everyone here can read this from, from where you're sitting, depending where you're sitting. But this, again, this is on the website, and you can easily look at these numbers. But each, here's each one of those land use categories I presented. It, the table has the, what the density uh, recommendation is, how many parcels there are, how many acres there are in this category, how many existing dwelling units there are, and how many new dwelling units there could be. So there's existing in the whole township uh, about 2,600 dwelling units. And there's a potential, if this policy is adopted, for 755 more. And the office commercial is the same, as I showed here, about three and a half million square feet. We then <coughs> looked at it compared to the existing zoning ordinance. When we, we ran these numbers with the existing zoning ordinance, there, there's 3,100 parcels in the township. It's about 10, almost 11,000 acres, 2,500 dwelling units. Under the existing zoning, there could be almost 1,500 more dwelling units. And there's the same 3.8 million square feet of office <coughs> under, under the recommendation of this plan, <coughs> these numbers are the same because these are the parcels, the existing development. However, potential, instead of 1,400, we cut it in half, we made it 755. And I'll, I'll explain to you why we think we can get away with doing that. And, in, and we, we do have the same amount of commercial office space. So the commercial and office space. So the, the main difference is really kind of embodied in this table as to what this plan is recommending for the future of the township. <coughs> when there, as I mentioned, one of the plans is we have to address what the housing needs are for this community based on regional growth patterns. And the way that we're doing it, and the way the county does it, and the way most of the municipalities in southeastern Pennsylvania do it, is they use numbers that are developed by the Delaware County Regional Planning Commission. The Delaware Regional Valley Regional Planning Commission oversees nine counties in southeastern Pennsylvania and south Jersey, southwestern Jersey. And they <laughs> administer highway funds. All, all the highway money gets funneled through the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission. But as part of their job, they come up with population projections. They have demographic experts, <coughs> and they project how, what the, the net migration, the immigration is in the township and what the birth rates are in uh, the communities. I think within the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission, there's something like 
three or four hundred municipalities. And they give you projections. So when we're trying to figure out how to meet the housing needs, that's, that's what we did. We looked at the, 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 current, the, the current population of townships, about 7,500 people, about 2,500 dwelling units, and that averages out to about three people per dwelling unit. The projections in the, that, are, that are provided by the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission is that by 2020, in another five years, we'll see another 600 residents. If you, if you use that same ratio, it's like how many people per dwelling unit, that, that's almost 200 dwelling units. <coughs> So they're projecting that by 2020, the township may grow by another 200 dollars. They're projecting by 2030 that we that see an increase of about another thousand people, and and that, you, that converted at that same ratio would be about 300 dwelling units. So when you look at the totals for this period, this is the we're trying to project out over nearly a 20-year planning period. The Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission estimates that there'd be a, an increase of 1,600 people in the township. That would be a need for 531 dwelling units. And here we come to the future land use plan down here. We're providing for 755. And that's why we are able to do that. Because a lot of times, if, 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 if they miss, I mean, you go into a lot of municipalities, and I'm not criticizing, I'm just saying people like the status quo. And a lot of people, if you were to just ask them if they moved into a municipality or they lived there for a while, how would you like to see the township in the future? And they said, I like to say it just the same. I don't want any more people. I like it the way it is. And that's well and good. But on the other hand, people have challenged that in the past and said that you can't do that. You know, you, the courts have ruled that you just can't exclude development. You have to provide for a reasonable growth. And so this, with this little test, we think we've done that. And, and then, as I said, under your existing zoning ordinance, this number is about 1,500 units. And we've knocked it down to about 755, and we feel that it, at least until 2030, that that's adequate to meet what the projections are. So if we're challenged by anyone, we can always say, well, these are the population projections, and that's what we're using. That's the only tool we have. And uh, we've asked, and the county uh, uses these numbers, and, and they're the ones that are providing the grant money, and they agree with us. And so we're um, using that, and that's that's where that comes from. <clears throat> so that's the that's the, um, the future land use, and in, and 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 part of the analysis that that's the analysis that, that says, are we meeting the housing? <coughs> in addition, uh, looking at housing. And, and based on some comments we got, and also observations from the, from the committee, these are some other things that, that we recommend. Um, there's there's a, the help of the rental unit inspections and permits. There's a number of rental housing units in the township. And some of the quality of these units is, is, is better than others, and others is, is pretty bad. And what municipalities have typically done to try and advance that quality is, is to have an inspection process to ensure that at least if you're going to rent a house, that it's livable. And so we're recommend, the plan recommends that the town should consider a developing a, a, a rental unit inspection and permit program. It's not a fundraiser. It, the, only, the, the permit fee would cover the cost of having the, the inspection. And it also, in a, in a municipality of this size, it probably wouldn't mean hiring a, a person that does that full time it would be contracted out uh, more likely to a code, a code company or whatever that would do that for you. But uh, to help improve the quality, I'm going to read this, to help improve the quality and maintenance of rental housing, it is recommended that the town should consider a rental permit program that would require regular rental unit inspection and an annual fee for the rental permit to cover the cost of the inspections. The other thing that, that uh, the committee uh, noticed is there's some demand for different types of housing units. And, and also, um, the idea we have a, an aging population, and maybe there's an opportunity to have uh, an additional dwelling unit on your parcel for uh, an in-law suite, or, or a cottage, or whatever, to accommodate family members that you want to accommodate. 
So, so we have in here a recommendation <coughs> that the town should enable and encourage a diversity of housing in areas consistent with the future land use plan that includes single family attached and multifamily dwelling units. It's also recommended that the town consider amending the zoning orders to permit in-law apartments and temporary on-lot housing, also known as elder cottage housing opportunities. Um, the, the, there's, there's lots of different jargon for this phenomena, but maybe some people here have noticed that they would like to be able to do something like that. And this is, a, you know, this is something that the committee came up with. And they, they felt very strongly about having that wording in the, in the plan. So under the housing plan, we included that. <coughs> then there was the transportation and circulation plan. Um, again, the map's going to be hard to read, but I'm going to talk about, that, about what's on that map. Um, I'm going to point out just, just a couple of things that, that, uh, that are here right now. These, um, <coughs> these red areas here are areas where we recommend, and not like on the road, but we recommend that there be a pedestrian bicycle trail linkage to these areas. And this would be, this is kind of, we look kind of like this, if the township has a core, it's probably here where we are now, and, and, and the Ursulton area. Here you have the elementary, the middle school, and, and over here is the elementary school, and, and here's the township building. And so if, if there was any kind of, a, a, if it's a strong demand for some sort of pedestrian link <coughs> or non-vehicular, it would be in these corridors. So the recommendation is to investigate a way of accommodating that. We don't say exactly how that could be done, but we recommend that, it, that, that, that the town should consider looking at that in the future. <coughs> um, I'm going to, oh, oh um, what else? That's, that, uh, we also have the same recommendation. Uh, there's a general recommendation over here. And again, on this map, you don't see it, but you'll see a scramble look like orange areas. These are all existing trails that, that are in the township. These are trail networks among this development. There's trail networks in East Bradford Township among communities here. And there's some trail networks among these uh, developments, uh, neighborhoods up in the northeast corner of the township. And we're recommending as part of that trail thing that they look into interconnecting these communities so people can walk back and forth. The only other thing to stand out on here are these blue lines. And we showed those because the county, and they, they, they update it continually. The, the, the Chester County Planning Commission maintains uh, a county-wide bicycle network. And these are roads uh, through various surveys and inventories and, um, and, and rides that they found to be relatively safe for, for bicycles. And so we showed them on there, but it really doesn't have an implicate. If it doesn't, we don't have anything specific to implement that in the plan. We're just showing it for reference purposes. Um, they also, they have two different categories, intermediate, and you can see why. People are familiar with the street photography summary, intermediate bicycle. And then they have beginner. Well, this is here. It's, along uh, Morneville Road into, into Medina, <coughs> along the Stream Valley, so it's pretty level, and they're shaded for me. Specifically, uh, the transportation plan identifies like, these five improvement, intersection improvements, Buck Run, Youngstown, and Upper Gap Road intersection. The road, there's road alignment issues, of right turns that don't have a stop, and site fixes. And so we recommend that they work on improving those intersections. Town and Westchester Road. They've already had engineered plans to improve the intersection. So now the recommendation is to, is to get the township to, to seek funding or at least get it on the transportation uh, improvement uh, program list uh, that is maintained by the Chester County Planning Commission and also by the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission to, to, to try and get funding to, to improve these, you know, that intersection. And, and this, is, this one here could be done. Because once you have the engineering done, that's a big, big step, and it makes it more competitive to apply for grants. Route 82 and Strasburg Road, uh, capacity improvements. Uh, Strasburg Road had had, and, and access, another access from the, from the middle school this property here in Strasburg Road. That's, correct. that's in the areas of recommendation. And then flooding along roadways. This was mentioned numerous times that there's various areas that there's flooding. 
<clears throat> we didn't attempt to inventory all those, but we recommended <coughs> kind of work in trying to alleviate uh, those flooding problems. <clears throat> the trails, uh, I mentioned them on the map from the middle school to the elementary school along Strasburg Road. A link from the middle school to the Township Park. I mean, the kids are going to the park. It's a, from here to the park, it's not really a safe way to get there. Right now. It's a 50 better crossings, and there could be a trail or a sidewalk system for them to get there. A link to Coatesville and the train station. People wanted to walk or bike or whatever to get to. I mean, regardless of its current state of repair, it will happen, and there will be a train station that, that is a track. And it may not happen tomorrow, but it will happen. And, and I think uh, we recognize that and, and want to try and take advantage of that. Uh, a linkage among newer neighborhoods in the township and northwest part of the township. try and uh, enable people to, to walk among those communities. We've already provided trails within the communities, but why not allow them to link to other communities or to a regional trail network? Uh, um, these are the trails that I, I talked talk about. I blow up the sections of the map to show you. This is the one around along Strasburg Road right here, and, and then uh, along 82 and the coast. Uh, a plan for the protection of historic and natural uh, there's a lot of stuff on that map. I'm not going to try and, 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 and read it off here, but I'll get, I have details. <coughs> First off is the Brandywine Creek Greenway. Hello, please. Hello? Yeah, we're in the back. You are, can you raise your voice a little bit louder? I'm, I'm, I'll try. Okay, thank I, I, you. <coughs> and and I, I, I don't know if you came in, but I was trying to encourage everybody to come up here as close as possible, so I can, I, I'm projecting it's about as much as I can, but I'll, I'll try. Face us when you talk. Face What's that? Face us when you talk. Okay, I, I know I'm looking at the screen and doing it. Okay, I'll do that. Um, this, okay, I, I'm going to go to screen for a minute because I can check to this. These heavy lines here, okay, these heavy lines, that's what's shown on here. And, and this is the, the study area for the, the Brainwine Creek Greenway that the Brainwine Conservancy and the County Planning Commission is working on. And, and that's, we recommend the only, and they've identified areas in here uh, uh, as, as corridors along the stream valleys uh, for access to the streams. These, these little dots here are access points to the stream where they recommend that there's possibly people can get access for fishing and, uh, and, um, and, uh, and whatever along the, along the various uh, stream maps. In, 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 in um, East Valley Field is right in this area, so there's not, there's not a lot in there. There's a couple of areas that they recommend. So we've included them. The uh, protection of natural historic resources, water supply and quality. Uh, there is a riparian buffer zone. It requires an 80 foot setback along all streams in the, in the town. And we recommend <coughs> that you maintain. We're not recommending it be enhanced, but that you maintain. <coughs> Stormwater management. Well, during the process of, of working on this plan, the township did adopt a new stormwater management uh, program, which is, it requires uh, much more work in trying to encourage infiltration of stormwater rather than having stormwater run off the site and also to improve the quality of runoff. So if you're collecting runoff on a parking lot, they don't want the, the oils and, and other debris in that water. So that has been enacted already. <coughs> and then well water. There's, we had the health department, county health department come and speak to us. And they have an inventory of problems that people have had with wells. It, a lot of it has to do with the proximity of septic systems, and, and so the, the, the water quality is, is not what it should be. And, and so we recommend that the town should look into this, because everything south of Strasburg Road, in this town, and I'll show you recently, shortly, is recommended to stay on public water, and, excuse me, private well water and uh, on-site sewer systems. So if that's to continue, you gotta have a good plan to maintain the quality of the well water. 
So we're recommending uh, that the township should seek professional services to investigate well water supply quality and prepare a comprehensive water resource management plan to deal with that. Um, historic resources. Um, the, old, the township has an, an inventory of historic resources. And but in addition, there's, there's two areas of the township that have been studied uh, to be historic districts as uh, for the integrity of the <coughs> quality of the buildings within those areas. And we've mapped them here. Uh, these are the Glen Rose and Washington <coughs> Historic District. They're not any official historic district. They're not what's called in the National Register. There's no local rules about them. But we're just recommending that the township consider the historic integrity of those areas uh, when uh, development is considered or, or, or changes within those areas to try and respect the historic integrity and quality of, of, of those areas. <laughs> There's scenic roads that were identified. They're in yellow. And, and, and they the Buck Run Road, Frog Hollow, Go Run, Church Road, February Road, and Mortonville Road. And, and we're just, uh, in, in the, the language of the ordinance is that these are identified as scenic roads. And so the views from those roads are what's important. So if there's future changes that occurs to land along those roads, that it be designed in a manner that, that tries to preserve the integrity of the views in those roads. It's not every road in the township, but these are roads that you mentioned the most times in being particularly seen. And it's not, I mean, your, your former com comprehensive plan had almost every road in the township was in the city as well. We tried to make it a little more reasonable. Um, we also identified an area uh, as a Greenway corridor, and this is this runs from the village of Mortonville down here into the entrance of, of uh, what's the name? Medina. Medina. The entrance into Medina, and this is the Delorey Brothers property, and this is the, the Brandywine Creek, and this is Mortonville Road, and so we're recommending that, that this area be looked at as, as as like a green corridor. It could be a, a combination of uh, passive recreation um, and, and, and uh, water related along the, along the stream for, for fishing access and, and to the extent that parts of it are renewable and actually do have the canoe delivery uh, service down here. And, and so that it'd be studied as a greenway corridor. And, and that, that would be in conjunction also with the township eventually uh, trying to acquire this park. The uh, Okay, and that's this part of the, this is all the protection of uh, historic and natural resources. Question? Yes. Is that uh, privately owned or commercially owned or what? This area here? Yeah. It's all private. It's all privately owned. And, and, and one or two families or lots of families? Or uh, in this area, I, you know, I don't have a, an inventory, but I would guess it's probably about maybe five to ten different tax parcels in that area. Uh, obviously, this area is not developed at all. I mean, it's a former, this is a cleanup site. And, and, and so, as a, as a pleasant place to probably, you know, enhance the road, have wire shoulders, whatever, to make it a little more pleasant to bicycle on or, or, or walk along, and, and provide uh, access to the street. It's, it's not a recommendation that says, let's go in here and condemn all this land and take it as a park. It wasn't that intention. The intention to study, and, and this was something that the, the township had been thinking about, and it came out. It was a suggestion of various committee members to do that. Uh, but and then the community facilities and services plan, and, and this is what the township owns and operates. That's what we're looking at with the community facilities and services. And th this map, I'll just show you some of the. the this one line here, and then, then I'll get into details. Um, this, this is along Strasburg Road, and this yellow line is recommended public water and sewer service area. So that's the extent of extending public water and sewer. That's what we're recommending uh, in the in the um, You know, quite frankly, I was trying to encourage an extension into Ursula, and they didn't want to do that. So it's it's going to stay right here. And this area is right around the school building here because right now this school doesn't have public water and sewer. 
might have public water, but it didn't have public sewer. And, and to think of a facility this large having to put everything in a septic system, it's not the best. So they're going to extend public sewer in here, and then areas here that aren't, anything north of here, uh, we recommend that it be considered for public water and sewer. Everything south of here is not. Um, now, as I mentioned before, there's septic system issues on small lots. We also inventory <coughs> all the lots that are in the area recommended for on-site septic that are smaller than an acre. And, and oh, so here, here's an example of the flaw in, in the Irvington Tower. All these lots are less than an acre. And the dilemma that creates is that if one of those septic systems fails, there probably isn't enough room on that lot for a backup system. So when that happens, someone's going to have to come up with a way of dealing with it. And the way it's dealt with now, if, if one of these totally failed and there's no way to have a, a backup, then people have to install holding tanks. And, and then have, they have to get pumped out. And, and so we, we have an inventory of those. They've had to deal, some of them have been an issue. The health department has told us that the soils in this area, an acre is about the threshold. They said it, in some cases, you can get down to three quarters of an acre and still have enough room for backup. So we kind of use an acre as a, as a, as a general rule. And we, we map them just so people can see you know, where they are. And overall, the map, you can't see them, but they're all shown in this map. Like every place is a lot less than that. And they have an on-site section. So we, we, we identified them. Now here, here's, here, here's the larger map, and then here's the specific. And this is going to have our I know you want me to look at you, but I'm not going to be able to read this. Um, overall, the recommendations, some of these are mappable and some are. Township administration, we recommend the township have a full-time manager in few communications, the website, and develop a land development checklist. Um, it seemed to be an issue that people felt at the public meeting that there could be better communication and the township could do a little more work to be a little more transparent and make it easier for people in the community to know what's going on. So that's what that's about. There's also a lot of administrative work to be done in the town and the field of the town's at the point where they probably should, uh, should have a, a professional management state. Um, <clears throat> so that's what, that's what that recommendation's about. The other one is an official map. An official map is, is a map of lands and roads uh, rights away and that the township would ultimately like to see uh, in the public domain. And official map, uh, typically before they had zoning, that was the only planning that was done. Communities would uh, lay out roads and then when property got developed, the developer was required to put the roads in. And that's really ha what happened before they had any kind of zoning or land use. They, they, just, they just laid out rubber. And that system of doing that, back then probably wasn't referred to it. But now, in the municipality's planning code, it's called an official map. And it, it's just a, a map of, of areas that you'd like to see in the public domain, either as road rights away, <laughs> road rights away, parkland, um, trails, mm -hmm and other public facilities. So the township, we recommend the township adopt such a map. So, so at least there's a, an official inventory of, of where they want to go in the future with those kinds of uh, public uh, land facilities. So we recommend that they adopt it, uh, that. Trash and recycling, the composting facility, uh, we mentioned that it could have better hours of service. So, and that's a work, it, it's a, a regional facility that, that's run with Medina and some other municipalities. So we recommend that they work to expand that. Parks and Recreation, uh, as I mentioned before, acquired the Eagle Club and Deloria Brothers property uh, to, for additional parkland. Sanitary sewer and public water services, public sewer service only areas <coughs> north of Strasburg Road and south of and the South Brandywine Middle School, as I mentioned. And septic systems. Uh, I, I, those parcels that are less than an acre. I say, I say here, there's over a thousand parcels 
that are actually there's over a thousand, excuse me, a thousand hundred parcels that are less than three quarters of acres and may not be able to accommodate a back And finally, financing. In, in this, I don't know how to present this one. This, this, this mentions the evil word because there's a word in here that says real estate tax. And, I, and listen, and hear me out. The only observation here was that the township is, let me put the area up there that, that we talked about having mixed use development of, of, of non-residential, non industrial, commercial, employment. If you develop that, you don't get any tax revenue from it because you don't have a real estate tax. And those people that work there pay earned income tax in the community in which they live. They don't pay at these foul field tangent. So in, in my experience, when I've looked at these in other communities in the township, <clears throat> it's typically about 50, 10 to say 10 to 20 percent of the people that, that work in a new office building or a retail facility or a restaurant or whatever in a community actually live in that community. And the way the earned income tax law is written, you only pay that in the community in which you live. Now, if you have to live in a community that doesn't have it, then you're lucky. Then the, then the township uh, where you work gets to collect it. But most municipalities have earned income tax. So if the township wants to expand the tax base, the only way they can capture any tax revenue from that is through a real estate. And, and so that's one reason that we mentioned. The other reason is we talked about right now the township has a trash fee. I don't know what it is, two or three hundred dollars a year. I don't know. What, what is it? Three hundred and ten. I don't know. Well, whatever it is, it's a trash fee and it's not deductible. If the real estate tax was just as a basis used to finance the trash collection, at least you can deduct that off your income. But you can't deduct, deduct the trash fee you pay that. So, that, that's kind of one of the concepts that, that they're talking that, that the committee is recommending in, in, in adopting a real estate tax. And I know some people might think, well, that's opening the door. But on the other hand, I, 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 I can tell you that if, in fact, you want to plan to have non-residential development to expand the tax base, you're not going to expand the tax base unless you have it. And, and I know it's kind of diversal right now because I know, I've seen the headlines in the newspapers. The state's considering getting rid of it. Well, if they do, they're going to have to come up with a way of replacing it with something because all the municipalities <coughs> like that now are going to have to look for other sources. And, uh, but at any rate, uh, that's, a, that's a recommendation that the, that the committee had. And they didn't take it lightly. They realized that it would be the most popular. Maybe that's why we reserved the full mechanism. Sometimes a good at the end. Right? But at any rate, th that's there. And, uh, and then finally, uh, I'm just going to go through, this is the, the, the line I talked about with the uh, public water and sewer. <clears throat> and, then, and then I'm going to shut up because I'm going to just leave this here. This is the, where we are in the process. We're right here, June 3rd. We're making a public presentation. This is all uh, got, uh, regulated or, or organized according to the, the state municipalities plan is how one goes about adopting a comprehensive plan. So this is all laid out. So we have this comprehensive plan presentation. We had to provide at least two weeks notice, and I'm sure we did. We sent out, and and we, we, we went a lot more than a lot of municipalities I've worked for in the past. We sent out postcards to everyone. Uh, a lot of municipalities just put legal notices in the newspaper, or they put up flyers or email, put it on the website. We actually mailed the postcard. So, Gave two week notice. This then will take, we, the, 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 the uh, Congress plan would then get forwarded to the County Planning Board. They're required to review it in the municipality planning board. So they'll review it to see that it's consistent with the county's plans for, the, for the, this area of the, the county. And that has to be submitted 45 days prior to public hearing. It also has to get forwarded to the school district and all the adjacent municipalities. And this all happens 45 days to have public hearing. And so all the adjacent townships and the, and the, and the principal school district get this. Um, the 
in my experience, you typically don't get much back. Sometimes they do. Uh, and then finally, <coughs> they, the, the Board of Supervisors uh, would, would adopt. Now, they haven't scheduled an adoption date, but I, I was just, I'm just doing the math here. Uh, there, I know there's a supervisor's meeting on the fourth Tuesday, I think, and it's the 28th of July. So theoretically, it could happen there, but there's some leeway. And 45 days before that is June 12th. So we have between now and June 12th to, to forward a, a draft plan to the respective agencies and still be able to have the supervisors have it here. Okay. So, so that's where we are in the process. And then, Fortunately, it stopped there. <laughs> I think the computer's locked up. So, what I'd like to do now, and I'll keep this on, and hopefully it, it might come back to life, and I'll be able to, if people want me to go back to look at something, they can. But, uh, I'm sure people have some observations. And let's not